couple of months ago I did a video where I made a replica of a perfume by Versace called The Dreamer and I went and found that formula online, got the raw materials and made it. And that was actually a really interesting exercise to do. It taught me a little bit about the structure of that kind of perfume and I think a lot of you guys seem to enjoy it too. And Some of you guys asked me to do some other perfumes. So today, here we are, I've got another perfume for you guys and this time I'm doing one of my favourite perfumes and that is One Million by Paco Rabanne. So this perfume contains top notes of mandarin, grapefruit and mint, mid notes of various spices including cinnamon and rose and then in the base notes we've got woody notes, ambery notes and patchouli as well as apparently leather although I don't actually really pick that up myself. Now, despite that notes list, if you can actually smell this perfume, you'll realize there really is a lot more to it. And it definitely doesn't simply smell like the sum of those notes. In fact, things like the cinnamon and the rose, I can barely smell at all, even though you do see them in the formula, and I assume they must be important in the smell. But actually, when I go and smell the perfume, I get a lot more of a kind of fresh beach, kind of maybe pineapple kind of vibe with lots of different fresh citrus and kind of nice uh, fruity elements. Now, when you're picking a perfume to do one of these studies on, you really wanna have one that's quite popular to make sure that you can actually find one of the formulas for it online. Because if you're choosing a very niche perfume, the chances are you would have to get your own GCMS analysis done for it. If you don't know what that means, then check out the video that I did on that a while back. And if you went and did that, that means it's usually gonna be very expensive to go and get that done. So in this case, I actually could find the formula for one million online, and I found it on a website called Creative Formulas. So what I went and did was I emailed Creative Formulas, and I actually asked them if they'd be willing to send me the formula for one million in order to do this video, and luckily they said yes. So thank you for that, Creative Formulas. Now, I was talking to the guy who owned Creative Formulas, his name's Felipe, he was actually really nice, and I asked him a little bit about the background of the website and where it all came from. He had a very common experience, similar to one that I had back in the past, which is you go and try to make a lot of stuff, and none of it comes out that great. So he got really interested in how the pros do things, and from that he entered the world of GCMS, which is an analytical technique used to actually go and analyze perfumes and work out what's inside of them. So he started uh, doing these GCMS analyses on different perfumes, and he actually trained himself up in the art of interpreting GCMS. He now works with different labs who go and run the samples through the machine, and then he goes and does some of that interpretation work. He went and developed and honed those skills over the years, and slowly got better and better at reproducing these formulas, and at the same time learning a bit about the structure of all of these perfumes. So then, during the pandemic a few years ago, that's when he started his website, and now he's got over 300 formulas, which anyone can go and buy already analyzed, and you can simply just buy the formula, get the ingredients, and then go and make them up, which is pretty cool. So I got the formula, which unfortunately I can't show you guys because, you know, obviously Felipe sent me this formula in confidence. But if you do want to get the formula for yourself, of course, you can go and buy it off the Creative Formulas website and it's really not that expensive. What I do have here is actually a bottle of One Million by Paco Rabanne. And if you know the perfume One Million, you may be looking at this and thinking that doesn't look anything like One Million by Paco Rabanne. Now this is actually a very special bottle of perfume. And the reason for that is this is One Million by Paco Rabanne, but this one is in a Givaudan bottle. And the reason I have that is because a few years ago when I went to interview for Givaudan's perfumery school, um, as a thank you to the applicants who went for that interview, they gave everyone a bottle of this. So this is one million, but bottled up in their own bottle straight from the factory. So I guess Givaudan must be the manufacturer of one million. All of these big brands like Paco Rabanne and most of the brands you can think of, they're not actually making perfumes themselves. They're hiring perfumers at a company like Givaudan to go and design those perfumes. And then they're also hiring these companies like Givaudan behind the scenes to go and manufacture those perfumes. They get all these perfumes, put their own branding on it and then go and sell it for their brand. Now, when I did the formula before for the Dreamer by Versace, I ended up having to make quite a few substitutions because I was just doing it out of the stuff I had. And in this case, especially because I'm actually a big fan of this perfume and I really wanted to do the most accurate job possible, I tried to get as many of the ingredients that I could um, in the formula, even the ones that I didn't have. 
Now, two of those ingredients have actually recently been banned for use, and those two are Lilial and Caranal, and I assume that Paco Rabanne are having to reformulate that perfume according to that, but the perfume sample that I have, because it's from a few years ago, I assume still has those two things in it, and also the formula still has those two things in it too. So we can kind of be looking at this as the proper um, original one million, and then in the future, I guess, things will change with it. So I didn't have those two things, but those two things were actually two of the aroma chemicals which I went and bought specifically just for this project. In total, this perfume had 58 raw materials, which was quite a lot, but in the end, I only had to make two substitutions. And one of those was a bergamot base, which I just went and replaced with bergamot oil. And another one was a specific aroma chemical called citronella nitrile, which I just couldn't get hold of. So I replaced that with the closest thing I could find, which was dihydrocitronella nitrile, which I'm gonna assume probably smells quite similar, but anyhow, it was actually the least concentrated or the smallest dosed ingredient in the whole formula. So realistically, the impact probably isn't massive. Although, you know, at the end of the day, who knows? If you're interested where I got all of these ingredients, most of them I had already, and that's just me having a large library of raw materials. But most of the ones that I was missing, I actually got from harrisonjoseph.co.uk. And those which I couldn't find there, I got from Pell Wall. And there was one ingredient called cyclogalbonate, which I just couldn't find at all in the UK. So for that one, I made a special order from Perfumer's Apprentice in the US. Paid all the shipping price literally just to get that one thing, which sucks a little, but it's cool. We managed to get it. And actually after smelling that ingredient, it was very, very strong and distinctive. So I do think it was quite important to actually have exactly the right raw material for that one in the final perfume. Now, quickly before we get onto smelling them, I think this does bring up an important point, and that is if you are a beginner, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this kind of exercise. And part of the reason for that is simply the expense, because if you're going to buy, say, 58 raw materials, that is a lot of money. And a lot of those raw materials won't necessarily be generally useful all the time. I mean, you can always go and use anything, but some of those might be specific to this perfume. And also, if you actually go and make this, you're not necessarily going to be able to get that much from it, because it's actually the knowledge of the raw materials in the first place and understanding on a basic level their function in the perfume that allows you to look at one of those formulas and smell something, look at an ingredient and think, okay, that's probably doing that, that fits into this category and it's, you know, say so that's kind of a base note musk and it's helping with the longevity and the overall kind of feel of things or this is a fruity note which is specifically adding a you know, say like a fruity sweetness or this or that. So if you were a beginner, I wouldn't actually recommend going to buy formulas like this and try to recreate them. But when you get further on in your perfumery journey, so once you've learned a lot of raw materials, you've gone and made your own uh, blends for chords and even tried your own perfumes, then when you want to get to that next level, then I think this is a really good thing to do. Find a perfume that you're passionate about, go and buy the formula for it. Hopefully at that point, you'll already have half the raw materials and then you can just go and fill in the gaps and make this formula and hopefully learn something from it. Okay, so I've got some scent strips here and now we're gonna go and evaluate these formulas and see what they smell like. So this is the original one from uh, Paco Rabanne, <laughs> Givaudan. Then we got another scent strip here and on this one, we're gonna do my version. So. Now the thing that's very cool about both of these is that when you go and smell them, you definitely, it definitely smells like the same rough kind of thing, right? They both definitely give you the same feeling. You feel like they're the same perfume. Um, and I definitely think that if you went to smell one of them one day, and then the next day you went to smell the other one, to the untrained nose or most people, I don't think you would notice at all the difference between them in particular. That said, there are definitely differences between them. So when you smell into it, what I think the main difference is, is firstly the real one, for whatever reason, feels a little bit stronger. Though, of course, I don't know the concentration differences between these, so that could be part of it. But I think the real version feels slightly more crisp, a little bit more fizzy, a little bit more fresh. And it also feels like it's got a bit more of this kind of, some kind of musky element or something in the background that kind of, let's say, just kind of, shouts out a little bit more. As I say, overall the smells are very similar. 
And this is also true even into the dry down, which I think is quite interesting because when I did that perfume before with the Dreamer, um, that straight away they actually smelled very similar, but the longer you left them, the further and further and further apart they got, and the replica started to smell noticeably worse than the original. But for this one, I did the scent strips a few days ago, and I actually noticed that these two keep quite true to each other even into the dry down, which is nice. But nonetheless, I do still prefer the original. There is a slight, it's very slight difference, but it is something that you can definitely distinguish and notice. Out of the differences which I can smell, I don't think they're fully explained by the substitutions. So I said I made two substitutions. One of those was the citronelle nitrile for dihydro citronelle nitrile. And this, after having smelled it and also seeing that it's pretty much the weakest thing in the whole formula, and I also think that the two, looking at their structures, probably smell quite similar anyway. I really don't think that that in any way can explain the whole difference between the two smells. The other one was the bergamot uh, base being replaced for bergamot oil, which I used. Now, I've found in the past that some of these bases, especially for things like tropical fruits and citruses from these manufacturers like Givaudan and Feminish, often lean towards containing certain components which are aimed at making them last a bit longer. They often smell a little bit less natural, but they can be quite strong. So it could be that there's something in the bergamot base, especially because the level of that wasn't too low. There was a reasonable amount of it. It could be that that contributes to it as well. That said, I don't think the whole difference in smell is just from those substitutions. It may be just a little bit of it. What usually the difference is coming from is two things with these kind of GCMS things. Firstly, there is the presence of trace elements, things which are just so small you don't really pick them up on the GCMS. And this could be because they've gone and made an accord or some kind of pre-made base for one of the notes, which has got lots of different things, some of them being at tiny levels. And when they go and actually use that base in the final perfume, because those things were already at small levels in that original base, and then the actual base is also used at a small level inside the final perfume, some of those things in that original base are now at such a small level that they're not even detectable by the machine that does the GCMS analysis. So there's a possibility for quite a few trace elements from bases. And the other big one with all of these perfumes that you analyze from GCMS is that a lot of these big manufacturers, companies like Givaudan, Feminish, IFF, whoever, they have their own sets of captive molecules. And these are essentially molecules which they've gone and developed and patented that they can only use themselves in-house for their perfumers and as such they're not available to purchase outside of that which means that they're not necessarily picked up on the GCMS machines because they might not be in the database or maybe they're picked up but there's no point of having them in the formula because they're just impossible to obtain anyway. So those are the two reasons in general for these things smelling a bit different. And I do feel in general, unless the formula is very simple, which is never the case for these formulas made by these big professional companies, then there's always going to be some discrepancy between the real one and the one you get from GCMS. And I think that's okay because at the end of the day, they went and put a lot of hard work into developing their perfume. So it's only fair to some degree that if you really want the real thing, then you go and buy it from them, right? That said, it's also very cool that we can go and get a formula like this and pretty much get somewhere between 95 to 99% fidelity and accuracy in the smell um, just by looking at what we can analyze. And for someone like you or me training to be a perfumer, if you're just trying to learn from this stuff as opposed to ripping off the brand, which is something I don't agree with, then this is more than unuseful enough for your purposes. Now, I didn't want to leave you guys completely empty handed without any kind of formula or anything that you can bring yourself from this video. So what I decided to do next was another exercise. And that was one a bit about going deeper into the perfume, deeper into the formula and starting to unpick it a little bit and something that would help us work out what's going on. So when you look at this formula, you notice that it's got various categories of raw materials. When I looked at it, I thought, okay, there's a bunch of things which look like they're from the kind of fruity notes. There's a bunch of things specifically that are pineapple-like, fresh, that kind of direction. There are certain things which fit a green note category, certain things which fit spicy notes, and also what looks like some kind of rose accord. So there's various different components in that formula. But these are all things which, in my opinion, really give the character of the perfume. It gives its personality and is what actually makes it one million, its specific kind of compositional combinations. 
What I thought would be interesting to do is let's strip away all of those parts and just get left with the scaffold or the kind of pizza base for the perfume, the actual meat of the formula, which gives it all of its structure and a lot of its performance characteristics as well. So what I decided to do was take my version of the formula and then cancel out all of those, um, let's say, bits which really give it its color and get left with this kind of a more generic base. So I'll put this formula up for you and one thing I did change was actually the Lilial. Because Lilial is now banned and not necessarily safe to use, that's the reason for the ban. Same thing with the Caranal. I actually went and removed the Caranal and replaced that with a little bit of extra Boisembrine Fort, which was already in the formula. And for the Lilial, I just replaced that with Silvial because after actually smelling this Lilial, I thought something else that I have called Silvial actually smells fairly similar. So this is essentially what I like to call a perfume base, essentially a generic structure of these kind of perfume materials that is quite neutral, but it gives good performance and then you can essentially go and now add what else you want to it to go and get your own unique perfume from it. So I've got my sample here and I'll let you know what it smells like. And bear in mind that this is about 75% of the formula for 1 million. So what I mean by that is it's about 75% of the actual perfume concentrate is in here in this perfume base. But what's really interesting is when you go and smell this, this does not smell like 1 million whatsoever, not in any shape or form. But what it really smells like is imagine you went to a perfume shop in general and smelled a lot of their perfumes. It smells a bit like the common thread, the thing that makes it into a perfume, but the, let's say, something very generic, it doesn't have its own character, it just smells like the base smell almost of a perfume, which is very cool. So it smells exactly like I would expect for a perfume base, it's just this generic smell which is diffusive to some degree, and it lasts a long time, and it's just this kind of subtle uh, mixture of subtle sweetness, muskiness, and all of the things you would expect a kind of balanced, well-rounded perfume to smell like without having any of its individual character. Now, looking at this perfume base, there are actually a lot of raw materials in it, but if you do have most of these raw materials, then I would recommend just throwing together the ones that you do have and trying it out. And this could be especially useful for you if you're trying to make your own perfumes, but you're currently having trouble getting them to smell a bit more professional. This base, you could almost say is kind of the essence of that professional smell wrapped up in one nice little formula for you. So if you're having trouble with that, then try going to make this perfume base. And then having that at about 75% overall in your formula, and then topping up the remaining quarter with anything that you really like. So if you've got your own top notes, mid notes, base notes, stuff that has got its own strong character, and usually I find when you're making perfumes as a perfumer, we're often attracted to our favorite raw materials with certain strong characters because those are the smells we like, but the trouble can come in when actually trying to make those and compose those into a well-functioning perfume. Well, this is a magic trick that you can use. You've kind of got your essence of well-made functional perfume right here by following this base. Then you can just top it up the last quarter with your own strong, characterful raw materials and I think there's a good chance that you'll get a perfume out of it that you'll quite like. If, of course, you end up liking this style of perfume, that is. Now, of course, there are a lot more exercises you could go and do with this formula. For example, if you're interested in the fruity notes or the citrus notes or whatever else, how that stuff is composed together, then, of course, other exercises to do would be to go and start grouping other notes together, for example, some of the top notes or maybe some of the fruity mid notes into their own accords and seeing how those come out and then you can start to play with it. And the more of that stuff you do, the more you learn. Honestly, if you go and make one of these formulas and just look at it, I don't really think you learn very much. But the more of these exercises you do with comparing, for example, a raw material in it to the smell of the perfume and then, you know, removing it, that kind of thing, or splitting it up into separate bases and accords, the more you're going to learn from it. So in essence, it's one of those ones where the more you put in is the more you're going to get out. Now, if you are interested in making some of this stuff for yourself and you don't have all of the equipment that you might need to do it, then head over to my online store where I go and sell most of the equipment that you're gonna need for your own perfumery, for example, things like bottles 
or if you want to pick yourself up a nice big box of pipettes, which is going to last you a long time. Or even something like this bottle, which you can go and fill with perfumes alcohol and then quickly squeeze into your little sample bottles to make it a lot quicker. Aside from that, if you're interested in making your own version of One Million, or in fact, any one of a lot of other perfumes that you may be interested in yourself, then definitely head over to Creative Formulas and check out their range of formulas. Um, the one that I made here, honestly, I was really impressed by. Um, it was actually better than that Versace formula I did before and it definitely gave me a lot to work with, a lot of stuff to learn off. So if you're interested in this kind of project, then definitely go check them out. So that's pretty much from me. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned something from it, and do let me know what you thought of it down in the comments if you'd like me to do more videos like this in the future. So thank you for watching, enjoy your perfumery, good luck with it all, and I will see you next time.